uh, for us on this Sunday morning. So please stand to your feet, everybody, and let us put our hands together for the spokeswoman for the King of Glory, Minister Jocelyn Harris, as she comes. Amen. Good morning, everybody. I am so happy to be here this morning, and since Pastor Mike already introduced me, I don't need to introduce myself. And so we will just get started with prayer. So pray with me. To the God who loves us all, we thank you for being with us this amazing morning, God. We thank you for what you've already done in this place, God. We thank you for what you're continuing to do in this place right now, in this very moment, God. We are depending on you. We're depending on your love in this very moment, God. Be with us in each and every one of our hearts. God, we love you. We worship you. We praise you and we bless your holy name. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hear now the word of the Lord. This is from John chapter 1, verses 19 through 26. So if you, I think it will be on the screen in a moment, or you can pull it up on your phone or your Bible, or you can just listen in. This was John's testimony when the Jewish leaders and priests and temple assistants from Jerusalem to ask John, who are you? He came right out and said, I am not the Messiah. Well, then who are you? They asked. Are you Elijah? No, he replied. Are you the prophet we're expecting? No. Then who are you? We need answers for those who sent us. What do you have to say about yourself? John replied in the words of the prophet Isaiah, I am a voice shouting in the wilderness, clear the way, the Lord's coming. Then the Pharisees who had been sent asked him, if you aren't the Messiah or Elijah or the prophet, what right do you have to baptize? John told them, I baptize with water. But right here in this crowd is someone you don't recognize. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Who are you? The priests and temple assistants wanted to know. They wanted to know who John really was. The priests and temple assistants needed to know who John really was. I mean, they were literally sent by the Jewish leaders to get an answer from John. This man baptizing people in the wilderness with no authority, no credentials, no permission, and absolutely no approval from the church to be baptizing people. How dare he? He was not Jesus. He was not Elijah. He was not the prophet they were expecting, but he was baptizing people. He was doing something so radical that upset the cultural and societal norms of the church at that time. The church people were puzzled, and they needed answers, and they needed some answers right now. Now, according to the scriptures, John did answer their question. After the second time he's being interrogated about who he was, John lets them know that he is a voice bearing witness to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But right after John exclaims this, the priests and temple assistants respond as if they didn't hear him in the first place. So now we're back to square one. Who are you? They're asking. They really were asking, who do you think you are? 
what gives you the audacity to come out here to the river with all of this authority? You ain't Jesus. You ain't Elijah. You're not the prophet that they were expecting. But people of God, they totally missed it. While they were so busy interrogating and questioning why John had the audacity to be baptizing people, they literally missed one of the most important pieces of scripture. John says it in verse 26. Right here in this crowd is someone you do not recognize. Who was that person? Jesus, yes. Jesus there. Jesus was there. So last October, I went to Howard's homecoming. It was lit. Um, <laughs> I'm a California girl, and um, I had never been to any sort of HBC anything. Um, and I said, you know what, I moved out here to the East Coast or the South, depending upon who you're talking to, depends on <laughs> where I'm at. I'm in North Carolina, so you can, whatever you want it to be. Um, but anyways, we went, me and a couple of my friends who are from California, we decided we're going to Howard's homecoming. So we last October. Had a whole bunch of fun. You know the deal. It was a lot of fun. Now, but nobody <laughs> could prepare us for this last night that we had in D.C. We went out that night. We went out to a drag show. For those of you who are unfamiliar with a drag show, it is people oftentimes LGBTQIA identified who dress up in sort of a more dramatic fashion as the opposite sex and participate in sort of lip sync performances form of entertainment that so many people enjoy. So we walk in and immediately we felt a very warm presence. Everyone seemed like they knew each other, um, yet made us feel welcome as if they had known us just as well. It was like family. We sat down and waited anxiously for the show to begin, and as the show went on, we witnessed some performances that were absolutely wonderful, and the community would show their love and appreciation for each performer with a monetary gift. No matter how great or how small, everyone in this community contributed. It was really beautiful. After hours passed, Finally, we were starting to get to the last performers, finally. I mean, we were there for like two hours, and so at this point, we were like, all right, it's time to go, right? We tired, it's the last night, it's time to go. So the last performer starts to come on, and one of the last performers was an older black trans woman who was clearly like some sort of legend in this community. Like literally almost every single person who got up to do a performance was like handing her a gift to them doing their performance. And so we were curious the whole time, like, what's going on? Like, who is this, who is this lady? Like, why is she getting all these gifts? Um, and then she gets up, and it's her turn to report, re perform. And the DJ presses play. And to our surprise, it's a gospel song. And the gospel song, but it's like one of those, like, shouting gospel song music, like, like, just like, <laughs> like immediately everybody is just going in and like, literally, I'm not trying to be like overtly spiritual. If any of you know me in here, I'm not one of those overtly spiritual persons. But I will say <laughs> that the atmosphere in the space completely shifted, right? At this point, people are up singing, clapping, their hands are lifted, people are crying, people are passing out on the floor, like, I'm not, this is not a joke, <laughs> I'm not over-exaggerating, like, this literally happened last October, and we were new for this experience. <laughs> Listen, we didn't come <laughs> to the show to have a worship experience, and here we were, and people were just worshiping God in this way. I literally had never seen before in, in a really unexpected sort of place. 
So me and my friends, we were all hyped heightened up, emotional, crying, all these things are going on. We were trying to pull ourselves together to get ourselves um, ready to leave. And as we're leaving, one of the, one of the performers was a drag, drag king, is a woman who dresses up as a man during the performance. And she starts to share with us her own life story. This is a woman who has identified as a lesbian, and she is an ordained minister, and she was talking about some of her struggles growing up and coming into the ministry, and she begins to just like just share with them her life, and she talks about how this show, this scene, is one of the main reasons why she does drag in the first place. She talks about this being sort of her ministry to her community. And so she prays for us in this moment. Again, I want to remind you, like, we're in a bar. We're at a drag show. Like, we're not at the wake, right? Like, <laughs> we are, like, at a club. And this woman is, like, laying hands on us and praying for us as we're getting ready to leave. So we just have this, like, miraculous experience at such an unexpected place. And we saw the Messiah. He was right there in the crowd. People of God, we could have missed Jesus that night if we acted like the priest and temple, also known as church folk, from our scripture reading today. If we were asking questions like, who is she? Who does she think she is? up here in drag performing a gospel song. Who gave her the authority to do this? What do you have to say about yourself? But I believe she was similar to John the Baptist in that she was a voice bearing witness and crying out in the wilderness, make way, Lord's coming. She was a radical woman of God in that moment who believed the spirit and power of God had no bounds and no limits. She didn't have any authority, no credentials, no permission, and absolutely no approval from bear witness to people. She wasn't Jesus. She wasn't Elijah. She was not the prophet we were expecting. But she was bearing witness. Like John, she disrupted the Christian and societal norms, and people's lives were changed that night. But I'm not surprised that this woman's radical ministry of bearing witness um, was not something hard to accept as Christian ministry. Unfortunately, in the history of our Christian faith and tradition, we tend to crucify radical people of the faith who are bearing witness in disruptive ways that are unrecognizable to us. In the same message today, John's ministry of baptizing people too was seen as too radical, too disruptive, and unrecognizable as Christian ministry. Earlier in this very chapter of John, we learned that Christ himself was unrecognizable. He became flesh and came down to earth to save humanity. So if Jesus himself and Jesus' radical, disruptive, and resistant ministry was unrecognizable, are we really surprised that some of the modern day prophets of today are unrecognizable? I want you to take a minute to ponder on that question. If Jesus himself and Jesus' radical, disruptive, and resistant ministry was unrecognizable, are we really surprised? that some of the modern day prophets of today are also unrecognizable. I literally want you to take a minute to think about that.
And as we continue in this season of Advent and waiting, I want you to take another moment. Close your eyes if you're comfortable. And I want you to take a quick poll of your year and ask yourself, how many times did I miss Jesus? Right in the crowd. How many times over this past year did I miss Jesus? Right. How many times did I write someone off as being a person incapable of bearing witness through a radical and disruptive way that didn't fit into your Christian slash Jesus? Take a moment and reflect. can open your eyes now. Maybe you are that radical servant of the Lord, bearing witness and resisting societal norms, and maybe you feel unrecognized. You may be out bearing witness through your lived life experiences, but no one seems to really hear what you have to say. Because who are you? No credentials, no permission, no approval to convert people. Through your art, through your voice, through your words, through your lived experience, people question you as they did John, they did this beautiful drag queen, as they did Jesus. When you speak your truth, because it may not be something that they're capable of grasping or willing to take the time to understand. Maybe you are the one the church is missing. Maybe you are the representation of Jesus in the crowd that's going unnoticed. So in closing, I just want you to take a moment I know this may be a little bit different, but I think reflecting in the moment, during the preaching moment, is really important. So we really can have some time to think about what it is that God may be speaking to us in this very moment. Individual persons, but we're here as a collective body this morning. And I want you to think individually what this sermon means to you, but I also want you to think about what does it mean for the collective body of the church here at The Way, and what does it mean for the collective body of the church? So take a moment and think. God, we love you with your holy name. God, we thank you so much for the word that you've given us this very morning, God. We thank you for what you're going to do with this word, God. We thank you for being with us throughout this year, God. And as we continue to wait during this Advent season, God, please reveal to us how can we continue to bear witness or how can we not overlook those who are bearing witness in ways that we're not familiar with, God. Please open up our eyes, open up our minds, open up our hearts, open up our spirits, God, to see, Lord. 
Help us, God, in this season to take the time to wait. To take the time to wait and reflect on what it is that you're doing in our lives. God, we, we worship you and we praise your holy name. And it is in your son Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Come on, let's stand to our feet, everyone. So, oh, what a profound question that was raised to us. Where are we missing Jesus? I want you to close your eyes and I want you to think about this question. Christmas always gets a door. Jesus, wherever Jesus shows up, Jesus is always showing up in the most unlikely places. He's showing up in our pain. He shows up in our pleasures. He shows up in our differences. He shows up in our contradictions. He shows up. for a few moments and adore the Lord wherever the Lord is showing up in your life today. He may be showing up in the space of great difficulty to just allow your spirit to adore the Lord today. God, we thank you for the word of God that has been preached to us. We thank you, Lord God, for the very plain ways in which as the text says you are in the crowd but we don't so God I pray that you will take the scales off of our eyes and allow us to recognize you as you manifest yourself in the name of Jesus you may be here today and you want someone to pray and touch and agree Jesus in the many ways Jesus is seeking to show up in your life. As Christmas is approaching, maybe you've not imagined Jesus would show up in certain places. It's Jaslyn powerfully illustrated. Amen. They had no idea what Jesus would be. Can you look in your own life and say, Jesus, where are you trying to show yourself strong? And how can I be prepared? to recognize you in the crowd. You may need someone to touch and agree with you that the scales fall off of your eyes so in all of the glory and all of the power, all of the grace, in your pain, in your abuse, in your difficulty, in your trouble, in your problems. If you need prayer today, come on out of your seat and let's meet at the altar together and let's touch and agree that we will blind me from the presence of Jesus, from the working of Jesus, from the manifestation of Jesus. Come on, if you need prayer today, this is the time for you to come and let's touch and agree together because Jesus wants to meet you right where you are. Come on, ministers, please.